Morning everybody, welcome back to the channel. Last week we pulled whole plant samples, including the roots, and sent them to Hillcourt Farm Research. The aim was to use their protein projector test to estimate whether our wheat will achieve milling specification of 13% protein. This is especially relevant as we no longer have access to the 12.5% protein Warburton's contract. In addition, we tested some of this land in the spring with CF Fertilizer's N-Min test, which showed soil nitrogen supply of only 88 kilos per hectare. Therefore, after applying 210 kilos of nitrogen per hectare, and with nitrogen remaining expensive, I'm keen to see if we are likely to hit milling specification. I am pleased to say that the light land in question appears on track for 13.4% protein, while some heavier land with a higher yield potential, also receiving 210 kilos of nitrogen, appears to be very close at 12.9%. With continued good weather, we are hoping this will also hit specification, which will enable us to mix both samples in the same storage. Throughout this year, I am comparing SAP analysis on a weak performing low biology field versus a strong high biology field. SAP data is presented on these highly helpful data sheets which compares young and old leaves against optimal values. Unfortunately, identifying seasonal trends is harder, especially as orders of magnitude change. For example, optimal potassium is in the range of 6,200 parts per million to 8,000 parts per million, while molybdenum is 0.05 to 0.2. I have therefore normalized the data in order that values appear similar across all nutrients, which I hope will enable us to tease out some observations. Let's start with magnesium, which should be in the range of 250 to 430. Previously, the new leaves were lower than the old, at 67 versus 113 with the wheat crop and 27 versus 230 in the healthy crop. This time the values, although still below the optimum, are much closer. 128 versus 143 in the poor crop and 166 versus 161 in the healthy. We have applied a foliar treatment of magnesium and the mag levels have risen in both old and new leaves, indicating this is a genuine deficiency and needs additional applications, so we will apply more. Calcium has improved in the new leaves for both weak 342 to 1100 and strong fields 292 to 1200. The aim is 575 to 1500. Old leaves haven't changed much with the wheat crop 202 to 244 and for the strong 275 to 289. As we have not applied calcium, this would indicate to me that calcium increases at this time of the year and isn't a factor we need to influence. Interestingly, in a foliar winter wheat, test from the 17th of May. It showed a deficiency despite a sulfur N application. These crops that we are testing for sap analysis have received only 0.7 kilos of sulfur within a magnesium product Nutrisol. New leaf values have leapt outside specification in a wheat crop from 610 to 1200 and in a strong crop from 680 to 1200 well outside the 360 to 590 optimum 
I conclude plants are very sensitive to foliar sulfur application. Sulfur has fungicidal properties, so this might help with disease control. Our plants have always shown signs of manganese deficiency. Both weak and strong fields showed low manganese in May. A foliar application ha has brought manganese back within specification, so the plant definitely shows a positive response. Looking back at the foliar sample from a different block, we were worried about potassium. But levels have been either close to or in the 6,000 to 8,000 range for all the sap samples, indicating that potassium deficiency is an issue on those chalk soils, but not on these heavier clay soils. This is very different to phosphorus, which is not soluble and hence is difficult for the plant to move between old and new leaves. Here levels have crashed in both new leaves, weak crop from 600 to 300 and in the strong crop from 500 to 200. The optimum is 370 to 620. While old leaves are slightly higher in the weak crop, changing from 60 to 100, and in a strong crop from 69 to 106, possibly a very early season application or even a seed dressing would be helpful. A very interesting takeaway is nitrogen. I shared our soil mineral nitrogen scores from earlier in the year with the strong field recording 228 kilos of nitrogen per hectare. We have added a little nitrogen, 40 kilos of foliar N. However, in both the weak and strong fields, total N has been outside specification for new and old leaves throughout the growing season. This is consistent with our finding that yield is more sensitive to reducing herbicides and fungicides than to reducing nitrogen. However, we have pulled some more whole plant samples, including the roots, and sent them to Hillcourt Farm Research for these two fields to use their protein projector to further test these theories. We have also enrolled in Yen Nutrition with a view to seeing whether the trends we are seeing in the sap is reflected in the grain nutrient levels. I hope you found this week's presentation helpful. Thank you everybody for watching. Please give us a thumbs up, click on the subscribe button, click on the little bell to get notifications of when our next video goes live. Thank you very much. Bye.